Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and Google Podcast. Joining me today is my co-host, MVG. What's going on, Nate? Great to be here. Oh, it's always great to have you. And we'll open today's episode with what I should do, because I am a man who believes you really only are as good as your word. And today, or well this week, Nintendo broadcast a Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. And as people know, we had made videos discussing the likelihood of another Nintendo Direct occurring in the month of August. And we had anticipated that it would air the end of this week on August 28th, possibly the 27th, due to sometimes there are time zone discrepancies between the information that we are relayed and the time zone in which the person may reside. But the Direct ended up taking place on Wednesday, August 26th, and it was a mini partner showcase similar to the showcase that we saw in July on July 20th. Now, we made some topic, or one of the topics in the videos that we discussed. I had said I was open to the idea of a mini, but I had dismissed the concept of it being a partner direct based on the information that had been given to me. And I felt as though it should have been a general direct. And you deserve to know why I felt this way. And the reasoning is quite simple. I was told about three games that were going to be in this Direct. The games had actually been shown in the Direct. The problem was is that the information I was given had said it was they were slated to be announced on Friday the 28th. This information had been under an embargo from the context I was receiving the information from. Now, what happened was is the date of the event had changed a little over a week ago and unfortunately the contacts I had had on this timing were not aware of the change. And that's the nature of this business unfortunately. When we find out information sometimes it is incomplete or something may have changed after the fact and people seem to think that we talk to our contacts and sources daily. We don't. Sometimes you may only check in once or twice a month, maybe once a week. It really depends on you know, numerous factors. We all have lives outside of this. And you don't want to be a pestering bee and say, hey, did you hear of a change or anything of that nature? You just kind of go with the flow. You have a conversation. Sometimes it's as simple as you just get one message saying, hey, hearing something is happening in September. They give you a date or they tell you what may be happening. And then, then that's the end of the conversation. You take the information, you know, you check with other contacts and you see if it's valid. In this case, I had numerous people come back and say, yes, the 28th is the day I am also hearing. And when it's unofficial information, sometimes the information ends up being slightly inaccurate or wrong. In this case, the date was wrong. The timing for the week was accurate. It was the last week of August. So that bit still remained true. Unfortunately, the exact date was wrong. And the bigger issue is that one of the contacts who had given me information about the dates of the previous two Nintendo presentations, meaning the July Direct and the Indie World, this person has proven reliable numerous times in the past. They were quite adamant that this showing for the end of August was going to have the 3D collection announcement in it. That ended up not being accurate. Based on that information, I concluded to myself, there's a Direct at the end of August. It should have Nintendo and first party games from Nintendo. What happened? Well, I said, that should be a general direct. Or at least a mini, but a larger mini. It wasn't the case, it was a partner showcase. And so that, I apologize to the people who may have taken the information that we had relayed, and you got yourselves hyped for a show that ultimately was a disappointment to you because you did not get the 3D Mario Collection announcement, you didn't see any of the Nintendo games that may still be coming in 2020, and you ended up with a showing that was just subpar in some people's opinions. And for that, I apologize again. The buck stops with me. All I can do from this is take it as a learning moment. And when I get information, perhaps I just don't get as specific as I have in the past. If I hear of a direct, let's just say at the end of September, all I will say is maybe in the last week of September, Nintendo will have a direct or a presentation. I will not get specific about a day. I'll just give a vague time window of when something may be happening. And then when we make a predictions video, if we are given the opportunity to do that, everything is going to be a prediction. 
they are not going to it's not going to be leaks because this channel was not built on the idea of leaking content or giving inside information the premise of this channel from day one was always to give insight and knowledge of how this industry and business works how decisions are made and to have an informed conversation about the game industry it was never about inside information so Again, I apologize to people. I will take this moment to learn and reflect on it, and we will do better in the future. We look at this moment as a chance to do right by you, and we will do that. I respect my audience. I respect the community's intelligence. And if you give us the chance, we hope to earn back your respect and your confidence. Yeah, well, I mean, Nate, that was that was very well said, and and I, I second everything that, that uh, you mentioned there. I just want to say, I guess, um, to add to that, you know, the amount of vitriol that I've seen, even I got some of it myself on Twitter over the last few days is just absolutely unacceptable. So, I mean, if you guys, you know, for, for some of the folks out there that, that want to come after us because we didn't get the prediction 100% accurate, then you need to step outside and enjoy some sunshine. You know, it, th there's better things to worry about in life than going after someone because they didn't provide you with the exact information that you're looking for. We we did say there would be a direct this this week. Uh, I even said that it'd be. I thought it was going to be a mini, which it was. So we can't always get it 100%. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. I mean, that's just the way things are. COVID has been an absolute curveball with every single video game publisher and hardware manufacturer out there as we know the amount of times that nintendo and microsoft and sony have changed their dates on this year on the schedule as you guys know we're into september almost and we still don't have a date for the xbox series x and the ps5 we don't have a price for either of those systems you can't you can't be convinced that anything is coming until the day it actually is here and hopefully someone in the in the organization hasn't said no we have to pull the plug we have to we have to cancel it till next week we have to we have to postpone it so yeah i mean i just i just wanted to, to mention that you know we you know look th this show is built on on you know on information i mean what we hear sometimes you know we will will kind of talk about and do some predictions and and do things like that but you're right nate we this is not a show about leaking you know that's not something that i've ever been interested in doing and i know you certainly haven't either so um you know i, I think um i think you know your words were were very good and i i definitely um you know agree with with you and you know i think for me the takeaway here is yeah we we will do better and um you know and we and that'll that'll happen immediately but i also you know want to thank the the audience that we currently have that listen to our show you know week in week out um our loyal fan base that have been so awesome you know that that have stuck by us and i think you know you guys have have really um made us continue doing this show and we're gonna we're gonna just keep going from 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 this and and learn from this and move on yes i mean and you bring up a good point at the end there the community that we have fostered has been nothing short of amazing I look at the comments section almost every day and the communication and discussion that's going on in that section is highly positive. It's a lot of people who are here to find out more information about the industry of why are things happening due to you know COVID or just from business decisions. Why has Nintendo's communication been so odd in 2020? And it's a very respectful comment section, which is not something you typically see on a lot of YouTube channels. And you know, again, to reiterate, we're not here for leaks. Mm -hmm. we're, ha we're here to have a good conversation with the listener. And that's why we have like the Streamlabs set up where you can donate just a dollar and you can ask us a question that we answer at the end of the episode because we do want to connect to the community. We want to give something back to the community. And what we want to give back to you is entertainment and insight and knowledge. That's our goal. That was the reason this channel was created. It was never built on the idea of hey, I'm hearing this, let me leak this. Yep. And that's where going forward, yeah, we're going to be more careful. Maybe it'll just be a situation where if there is a public rumor going around, we can entertain it for discussion's sake. We will not take the lead in coming out and saying, 
this is going to take place on this day because right now if doug bowser called called me on the phone at this very minute and said hey nate on september 3rd we're going to announce the mario 3d collection i'd say whoa doug i don't believe you because <laughs> right now the way this year's been going yeah it could change it could all of a sudden you know now it'd be october nothing nothing there's no certainty in the industry and the industry is very fluid yes and that means it's constantly changing yeah we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring in the industry because right now there could have been a game slated for announcement that changed in the last hour yeah and it's a very common thing you see it all the time with e3 there are games removed 11th hour and it's just the nature of the business absolutely but, yeah i mean, I mean th 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 there's just no way there is just no way that you can uh -huh. you can pinpoint a date and say this is the date anymore you know th this year has been right. has been so volatile with so many different things moving around that there's just no way you can accurately say that and sure you know if the information that you heard two weeks ago may have been hey there's a general coming up that's that's great but i mean as we know that that doesn't necessarily translate to something that's actually going to happen right and like the thing with information is that it can come from your best contact we're only as good as the sources we have right and to kind of make this more relatable to the listener let's say mvg and i are your source well you heard what we said and then you made a story about what we said and then it's inaccurate. Well, people are going to see what you reported and say, well, this person's information was wrong. Your information wasn't wrong. It was your source's information who was wrong. And sometimes like now, yes, I'm that person's source. Then I have a source and maybe that source has a source. Right. It's a lot. It can be a long game of telephone. Sometimes things are just lost in that translation. Other times it's just, hey, I'm hearing a direct is taking place on this day. Here's some of the announcements that could be happening. You validate the information. You verify it with other contacts. You always verify with at least two. I go even beyond that. And it can still be wrong. Because sometimes there can be an assumption made along that path, and it mixes the information. And that's it's a very common thing. And as we said, take the moment as a learning moment. We will be more careful with information that we relay from this point onward. Again, I mean, my apology to you is sincere. I'm not here to mislead people. I'm not here to overhype people. I'm here to share my view, my insight, my opinion, my predictions of the industry from a business perspective, a technology you know, perspective, and help the listener find and guide themselves to maybe a result that they weren't thinking of before. That's been the goal of the show from day one, and we'll continue to work towards that goal. But there was a direct this week, though, right? I mean, we we, 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 we we still predicted the direct was here, right? Yes, <laughs> we we, we, did, direct. we didn't get the right day, but there was no. a direct. And I mean, that was the thing. Yes, the day was off. The day had been originally slated for the twenty eighth. The date was moved up to the twenty sixth. Yeah, and I mean, that's the type of change you're probably not going to get that much lead time advance notice of because it was i mean if it was changed a week ago which is generally was it's kind of what i've been hearing that's not a lot of lead time people say well why didn't your one of your sources update you yeah well yes it sounds like something that could be that simple but like i said you don't you're not always talking to them you do have lives beyond the industry and sometimes it's just hey you not you don't really think of it or the contact may just not have been in the position to find out about the change at that point, found out about it at a later date. And honestly, and people can answer this in the comment section, had I come out on Tuesday night and said, oh, the mini's going to be Wednesday morning and nothing on Friday, would yeah. it have mattered? The damage was done. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it. you have to, I mean, it, it almost feels like you have to get the information 100% accurate. Otherwise it's, it's, you know, it's wrong information. You know what I mean? Yes, and that, I mean, that's the nature of this sector of the gaming. Yeah. If you want to talk about rumors or if you want to leak something, it has to be 100% accurate. There really is no room for nuance. It has to be bang, mm -hmm. you know, right on the money. You can't have a slight deviation. And 
I mean, that was the thing. Yeah, the direct happened this week. The deviation was the date had changed, and that erases everything that we had said about it. It didn't matter that it still happened. The date was wrong, and the format was wrong. Though, again, to your credit, you did say it was going to be a mini. It just felt right. like it felt like a mini to me. You know, <laughs> I, I, I mean, look, I have no, I have no idea what was what it was going to be, but it just, mm-hmm. it just felt like it felt it felt right and ended up being a partner showcase which you know nintendo said that there, were, there was going to be more of these and 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 here we are with with the second one so i guess my question nate is what's up with these partner showcases do you think this is something that um you know these games were meant for e3 that are just i don't want to say lumped into a direct because that's un- being a little unfair on on the the developers of those games but is it something that contractually nintendo is obligated to fulfill for these developers or um what what's what, what do you think the deal here is when i looked at some of the games that were actually shown to in the partner showcase they did feel like at least a few of them did felt like e3 tier announcements especially something like just dance that's always a big show yes. at e3 for ubisoft that then ubisoft didn't even have it in their own ubisoft show back in july and I know a lot of people kind of like, that's a weird omission. We know it's coming out this year. Why wouldn't it have been at their own showing when, you know, they typically have the animals come out and they dance down the aisles at E3 and everyone says, oh, no, it's the Just Dance sequence again. And it appeared today. And it was like, okay, well, that normally is an E3 announcement for Ubisoft. So that's curious. And then we saw Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. And I don't know if that would have been an E3 tier direct game that mm. seems like it still would have been something towards this summer had nintendo had a pre gamescom direct in which they traditionally do even this one it was technically a pre gamescom mini direct partner showcase so the timing is on track to what nintendo has done in the past and the rest of the games really just felt like a hodgepodge mm. of really anything like yeah square enix was there and pretty largely they had a few games in it and to go back to the original point that you had mentioned is that Nintendo once again said details about the next Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase will be revealed in the future. And that was very telling to me. When I read that, what that meant to me is there is no general Direct for 2020. And by general Direct, I mean a full length, like 40, 45 minute Direct. Those aren't happening in 2020. I think everything going forward for Nintendo they're either going to be minis if they decide to have first party software in them, or they're going to be the partner showcases where they're going to highlight more of these third party games coming out this year or even in early 2021 to the Nintendo Switch. This is the second one. It was about a month from the last one. And if there is a show in September, I think it's going to be another partner showcase. And the only way it isn't, and then it would just probably be dubbed a mini, is if Nintendo decides to have a first party game in it. And so far in 2020, Nintendo really hasn't relied on directs or direct minis to highlight their 2021 releases. Paper Mario was a Twitter drop. Pikmin 3 was a Twitter drop. And at first, when these were happening, we were like, well, maybe this is because they're more of like a B-tier franchise to Nintendo. Yeah, They don't need the direct. I think it's just simply working better for them at this point of yeah. there's no competition around them. It's the one game. It's the focus for them. They can put out the video. You're going to watch it and they can move on so i wouldn't anticipate any direct coming forward to be a partner showcase i just don't foresee a general direct coming in 2020 and that can still be due to the work from home situation the communications between all three regional branches still being a little more complex to organize whereas something smaller like a partner showcase is a little more because it's condensed it's less communication you can just reach out to those you know, six or so studios, you can coordinate very easily. Boom, you put together an 11 minute show. And then, you know, you hope everyone's excited. And I mean, the partner showcase has been tough for them. It does feel as though, because it's not what the fans want. Fans, you watch directs for Nintendo games. Right. And Nintendo is not putting their games in it. And it continues to baffle me as to why Nintendo hasn't had a first party game in it. Like, let's go back to the July partner showcase. It was July 20th. Two weeks later, Nintendo decides to announce Pikmin 3 on Twitter. You easily could have had Pikmin 3 
in that July Partner Showcase, just to give it some first party, you know, flair. Or even this, let's say there is a Mario 3D collection announcement coming very soon. Well, I was going to ask, so... Does Why not put it in this? Yeah, so is it going to be the same thing again? So like next week or the week after we see the Mario 3D collection just get dropped on Twitter? If I had to guess the venue in which Nintendo would announce it, I would say Twitter at this point. Because unless you just do like a Mario dedicated direct of its own, at which point the direct is really just a term for branding. Yeah. But it still feels like if you just had a show you know, let's say a week, 10 days ago, why didn't you just incorporate Mario into it? It would have gave people something more excited about when they watched it, and they would have walked away feeling more satisfied than, you know, look, than what we ended up getting. And it's not a knock on any of the games that were shown. I mean, Just Dance has its legion of fans. Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is something Kingdom Hearts fans will enjoy. I enjoyed the theater rhythm games of the Final Fantasy franchise, so Kingdom Hearts is something that I will have interest in. World of Tanks Blitz, that's a game that has millions of players worldwide on mobile f- platforms. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, that's an exciting announcement. Yes. I have my issues with Puyo Puyo Tetris because the the first one launched without a colorblind mode, so I couldn't tell what the colors were to match them up, and I could never win. They eventually did patch in colorblind mode. Game of the so Year I- nomination, Jump Force. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, Jump Force. Um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, available now. We've had kind of heard about that numerous times. Uh, the Minecraft Dungeon DLC. I'd say the biggest announcement, aside from Puyo Puyo Tetris, was collection of Saga Final Fantasy Legend. Yeah, I would agree. And yeah, that's a nice little collection of games. 15 bucks comes out in December. But it would have been a bigger deal, I think, had it just been a normal... Had it been partnered with a first-party game. Can you can you speculate and try to answer this question for me? The last campfire shadow dropped yesterday. Yes. How does that happen? How does that happen when it was advertised in the indie showcase back in March, I believe, of this year? Mm-hmm. And I would say it's a pretty high profile indie release that people were wondering what had happened to. I predicted that it was going to be in the indie showcase last week. It was not. I was a little, little surprised that it wasn't. But you know, it's always difficult to predict an indie showcase because you never really know what's coming. And here we are. It's like the day after the the partner showcase, we get a shadow drop of the last campfire. Oh, by the way, it's available on the eShop. It's like how does how does that happen? And I guess. Is it is it really just Nintendo is is I don't want to say scrambling, but what what is what is going on here? You know, what, can you make yeah. any sense of this? Because I this is one that it just completely baffles me. Oh, I am as perturbed as you are to this because it was great. They had the initial announcement of the last campfire back at the last Indie World earlier in the year, and it was it was kind of like a whoa moment. Yeah, you know, it's from a notable indie developer yeah the first game is still isn't really complete but it was like okay look they're doing something new they're doing something unique that's exciting and earlier this year was just slapped with a summer 2020 and then we're in mid august and we have an indie world well this game's supposed to come out in summer and it's missing and then a week later it's oh yeah it's out today like wait a minute you just had an (laughs) indie world you couldn't have a, even have reached out to the developers and say, do you guys want to at least be in our sizzle reel where we will announce your release date? Get it, that extra buzz. Yeah. This just out of nowhere release, I don't understand why Nintendo wouldn't reach out to them for a second time and say, we have the Indie World Showcase, or even we have a mini partner showcase direct airing the day before you launch Mm -hmm. what a better place to build up some pre-launch excitement to say coming out tomorrow preload today and you would have had people watch the 11 minute partner showcase gone to the eShop and say yo last campfire boom gonna preload instead it just releases and it's that's that's confusing to me i mean obviously we don't know the business end of everything right 
like someone had pointed out to me on Twitter that Sony had tweeted about the game earlier on Wednesday. So maybe they had a deal with Sony. Hmm. But your initial debut was with Nintendo. And if I were Nintendo, I'd say, we're going to give you that debut spot. And then later in the year, we're going to push the marketing even higher. Because look at the nature of the game. It's perfect for the Switch. Switch will probably be the best-selling platform for this game. And if I were Nintendo, I would have wanted to market this game again. And even if I were the developer and the publisher of the game, I would have gone to Nintendo and say, hey, can you guys help us out again? Yeah. It's weird, especially when you just consider all the timing. Like, had Hollow Knight Silk Song Shadow Drop today, I think everyone would have been sitting there saying, why was this not in the indie world? Yeah. It's a high-profile release, which is something the eShop hasn't really had in a few weeks now. Why, 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 is it, why are you not showing this? Why are you not showcasing this in a meaningful way? And it could have been, I mean, I, I would imagine it's just simply a case of business. Yeah. Maybe another deal was met or Nintendo was just like, well, we're not reaching out to you again. We had the reveal. If people are interested, they can look at the eShop when you eventually come out and find you. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, the, maybe think of it another way. So these partner showcases are something that was meant for E3 and there was already some contractual obligations in place, uh-huh. you know, to to present these and that's essentially what the partner showcase is maybe hello games as game last campfire didn't didn't make that cut because it wasn't a part of that so i wonder if yeah the partner showcase is essentially you know what was supposed to be at e3 this year and it's just being you know drip fed to us every couple of weeks well that's the thing like i, I think nintendo could even communicate that better if that is what's happening here like had if they did begin production of an e3 direct and now they're just kind of cutting it saying well here's partner showcase one here's partner showcase two partner showcase three eventually they're going to run out of content if it is going that way so i do think a lot of this is probably them just communicating with developers in the recent weeks and months saying hey we're putting together a direct you guys want to be in it yes of course we do and then it's airing. And I wonder if some of these developers who are making these deals are watching the shows saying, we thought it was going to be a bigger show. This isn't exactly what we wanted. We're yeah. still take it. It's nice publicity. Nintendo does, you know, it helps them. Nintendo is publicizing your game. But, I mean, we have to look at directs from previous years in non-COVID years. Even if you were in a direct mini, it was still a damn good show. These partner showcases are still new. They're fresh. We're really uncertain to, you know, what's ever going to be in them. And as far as I know, and this goes back months, is that when a developer is asked to be, if they want to be in a direct, they don't know the nature of the show. They don't know if it's a partner showcase, a mini, a normal direct. The only time they would know, I believe, is if it's an indie. Because, you you know, Nintendo would probably just specify, hey, we're having an indie world show you're an indie game you want to be in it otherwise i really don't think they know the branding yeah and like again can you imagine if you want to highlight your brand new game and you're in this partner showcase where there is no nintendo games and your game is sitting there and you might say to yourself well we may have been able to do the exact same thing had we just done a social media campaign depending you know obviously it would depend on the company like ubisoft just as an example wouldn't they have had more of a media attention had they had just dance in the Ubisoft show last month than having it in this more recent partner showcase? Wouldn't that have benefited them? Yeah. Have it at their own venue than right. giving it to Nintendo where it was just kind of an afterthought and an 11-minute presentation? Yeah, and they, they said that there was going to be another Ubisoft forward event, right? Um, the second one. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess we were assuming that we would see Just Dance there. And we still may see it, right? Like on, on other systems, maybe in the next gen versions, but we already know about the game now. So it, it doesn't really make any sense to me that that was, that was something that, that was announced at the, uh, the partner showcase. Totally especially agree. as, especially as the debut announcement, like had Ubisoft done it in at the Ubisoft forward event and they did their normal debut. Cause you could, they could have filmed a skit in a classic Ubisoft fashion. And got people sitting there, you know, moaning and groaning, saying, oh, yeah, just dance. And then you would have had it in this partner showcase 
because you're about two months from launch as just a reminder that the game is coming and Nintendo wants to advertise it because Nintendo platforms have generally been the best selling, you know, piece of hardware for the Just Dance franchise. It sold on the Wii great until they finally discontinued it this year. Yeah, still salty and- about that. <laughs> you can't get the last copy, the Bummer. last Wii U, the last Wii game. It won't be Just Dance Twenty. <laughs> Bummer. And it, it would make more sense that way because that's typically how we saw it play out in previous years. And that's where Nintendo's marketing in 2020 continues to confuse me. Yeah, I just don't understand what is happening. These partner showcases are just underwhelming and it's not even just due to the content itself it's that it's nintendo's reluctance to participate in that Mm -hmm. they've had two chances to to include a first party game at this point there was no reason pikmin 3 couldn't have been in july and as far as i can tell there was no reason that the 3d mario collection couldn't be in this one except that maybe nintendo is building towards something bigger for how they're going to unveil the 35th anniversary of mario and mario's birthday is september 13th it's clear now that the Mario collection is not coming out in September as we had kind of anticipated. We thought they would have celebrated with the release of the game. Instead, it looks like they'll celebrate the release of, or they'll celebrate the month with the announcement of the game. And I guess they're going to slate it in as, at this point, I would say a November holiday title, maybe early October. I don't know how they really want to pace games now because we're looking at all of August had no retail published first party software. We're gonna. We're potentially looking at all of September, with no first-party published software, and then ninety-five percent of October, with no first-party published software, and that is astounding. Mm-hmm. That Nintendo is willing to go, oh, about ninety days, without releasing a new first-party game. So back in June, Furukawa said. What was that thing he said about directs? He basically said something along the lines of directs are effective, but they're going to look to adapt them in the future and in a more straightforward way. So do you think, okay, do you think that his words are, or do you think this is a result of his words kind of forewarning us that maybe things are changing? Or do you just think, you know, what he said was kind of just a, you know, something a a CEO at the top of the food chain would say normally that doesn't really have much weight. I think it was a, it's a way to say things are changing and we're seeing it with the partner directs. Yeah. As effective as Nintendo directs are, they're looking into new ways of how they want to communicate with the base and the partner directs just highlighting third party games. I think this was one of those avenues that he was kind of talking about. Because at the end of the day, like the Nintendo first party stuff, it doesn't matter where they announce it, be on Twitter, it could just be a random press release that the media will then report on minutes later, it's going to get headlines, it's going to spread like wildfire. Right. But my fear is, as kind of touched on earlier, is if you're doing these partner showcases or even just Nintendo Direct minis, if there is no first party software, you're removing a large percentage of why people view it. Mm-hmm. Not many people are viewing these yeah. directs just for kingdom hearts melody i gotta They're be honest i didn't I, I didn't watch it right because <laughs> i mean what was your incentive to watch it yeah yeah i i just kind of read the summary of the games and i was like okay that's cool and kind of got on with my day you know and i think it's also from the format it's just it's shadow dropped and you can skip ahead in the video it's not a stream where you're yep. watching it unfold and you know live it's well, this game looks dull. Let me skip forward 30 seconds. Oh, they're still lying. Let me skip forward another 30 seconds. Oh, new game. Oh, that game's not of interest to me. Let me skip forward. Oh, it's done. Yeah. That's, I mean, I get it. They don't want to really waste your time. It's just kind of like, hey, here's some updates on a lot of already announced software. A lot of it was, a few of the games were dated to come out this week. And the stuff that was brand new, like Puyo Puyo Tetris and Just Dance 21 and Big Rumble boxing creed champions um <laughs> oh and world of tanks blitz which was available on the eShop immediately after those aren't really things that if you had to watch this through for the full like 12 minutes uh, normal style presentation you probably would have walked away saying what was that and otherwise you just skipped ahead and, and still said at the end what was that that's it and it just it makes you concerned about what really is nintendo's 2020 
even from third party standpoint, there's hasn't been a big third party announcement yep. for the platform for the rest of this year. We're still sitting just on Pikmin three. Waiting for Doom Eternal. Another like two now. Two partner directs have come and gone. Yeah. Doom Eternal has not been in either. We have not heard about Bravely Default two since March. Yep. We last time I heard about No More Heroes three was only in August. Somewhat recent. He blocked most of the screen with his head. We still don't know a release date. <laughs> and now we're going into September. And two potentially big third party releases, though Bravely Default, I believe, is being published by Nintendo, aren't dated. And Doom Eternal has gone missing. We have not heard of this game since it was delayed. We have no communication whatsoever. And these are Western, I mean, Doom is a Western studio, it's being handled by Panic Button. We don't know the extent of COVID had on their development. Right. Yeah, we. it's it's very difficult to say. I mean, the last communication we heard from Panic Button was probably about four to six weeks ago, and they said, everything's looking good, and stay tuned, there's more to come, and we haven't really heard anything since. I mean, so I, I still expect that game to, to come out this year, but it's very difficult to, to really know when. And you're right, Nate. I mean, we, we just don't know, and, and going into September... This is this is the strangest year of video games I've ever had to endure because it's not just Nintendo, obviously. It's pretty much everyone else, you know, Sony uh-huh. and Microsoft are, are pretty much the same. I mean, sure, they're being a little more communicative with, with their audience, with their fans, but there's, there's so much stuff that's supposed to be coming, yet we're almost in September and, and we don't know anything. And it's it's very, very strange. And that's the thing, like people people continue to cite, oh, Microsoft and Sony have been very vocal. They've been communicative since June. And they're launching brand new hardware this year. I mean, let's take a look at Microsoft. Yes, they are launching they are launching brand new hardware this year, but their flagship first party game has just been delayed potentially up to a year, if not more. We don't know when Halo Infinite is coming out. My expectation is probably holiday twenty twenty one. Maybe if we're lucky we get it in summer. So, yes, Microsoft is launching new hardware. They don't even have a game from their own development studios to, you know, to be with it. Sony seems to be in a bit of a better spot. They're supposed to have Miles Morales for this holiday. Ratchet & Clank was just dated as a launch window game, which is a loose term used by the industry. For some, that means the first three months. Others, it means the first six. <laughs> but Sony does have first-party software coming to their platform. They've said Horizon two is probably within those first six months or so as well so like sony looks good on their end yeah their communication still hasn't been overly strong they're still kind of like they're not willing to slap on release dates for the platform yet yeah nor is microsoft now they want people to sign up on a website and and get their name drawn in a raffle yes to do like reservations (laughs) for an undated unpriced piece of hardware (laughs) and you know it's weird then because we are, we're about to hit September and we don't even know the launch day or price of this upcoming hardware that is launching in, from this point of recording, we'll say roughly eight to nine weeks. Yep. They have to start kind of communicating things too, which means they're a little uncertain on certain things on their own end, be it software or hardware. And then you have Nintendo, a company who dated Pikmin 3 and nothing else for the remainder of the year and we're about to hit September. And the longer you wait, the li- more limited your marketing cycle becomes. And to Nintendo, they're no stranger to this. Last year, they had announced Ring Fit only about five weeks before it came out. Worked, to, I guess it worked to their advantage. The game has been a huge success. And even with Animal Crossing, the gap between the, you know, pretty much the announcement for the release day and the actual release pretty narrow i don't know if it's to build hype and keep people excited from when they give you the information to the launch but it seems to be working for them but as a consumer you get restless Mm -hmm. saying guys we're about to hit september all we know from nintendo's pikmin yeah we've been hearing about this mario collection since march we still haven't seen it and yes we would have seen at e3 but covid put a stop to that And that's the thing. A lot of these plans have been delayed months due to COVID. And the companies are just looking at it. 
they're playing things, I guess you would say, conservatively. They don't want to date something too far in advance and then have the threat of having to delay it. Yeah. Microsoft just encountered that, and it's been brutal for them. It has not been easy for them with Halo to say, in July, this game's coming out with the Xbox Series X later this year, and a few weeks later have to come out and say, we're delaying it potentially, you know, maybe six months or more. That doesn't look good. That doesn't give you confidence in a brand. And then you have Nintendo on the other end of this who are playing things so safe. They won't date something that they probably know is going to come out in six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't get it. So what do you think? um, What do you think the, the, the next four weeks looks like? So, I mean, let's, let's kind of ask the, the real question. So the 3d collection, it still exists. Yes. We just don't know how it will be announced. We don't believe it's going to be a general director. I agree with you. I think, I don't think general directs are a thing this year. I mean, it's, it seems very apparent that the partner showcases and the indie showcases will be what, what we, what we see for the remainder of the year. So do you think, do you think the 3d collection is a Twitter drop and when do you think it will be announced? Because I mean, I would have, I, I think I said in the last episode, I'd I'd go to a bookie and put money down on the 3D collection coming out in September. Um, <laughs> I don't know anymore, right? I mean, is right. it is it really September now, or or is this is this the the holiday game? Like, is this the holiday game now that that's coming out like later on, maybe November? I think now it's going to be positioned more as a holiday game than they had originally planned yeah. because, like, as I said, the original plan was that the 3D collection. And the whole 35th anniversary was going to be a big celebration. It was going to start at E3. But it was also going to culminate with the launch of Super Mario World in Japan. The theme pack has been delayed. They, you know, that's uncertain as to when that's going to open. And then no E3. And Nintendo still could have announced these games at E3 had they wanted to. But I believe the original plan was that the 3D collection was going to come out in September. Had these games been announced in June that the 3D collection was September, and then we probably would have had the 3D World Deluxe follow it in either October or maybe even early November. Now, that's completely scrapped. I think we're looking at a situation of the 3D collection and 3D World Deluxe probably being announced in September. That's going to be the birthday Mario, you know, the 35th anniversary celebration. It's just going to be the announcements. And we're potentially looking at... 3D collection either being an early October if they want to give October another release to go with Pikmin or the 3D collection is going to come out in November be positioned as a prime holiday title you're going to have a Mario themed you know console dock and all of that wait and did you 3D... say prime did you say prime night yes i did say prime there's no metroid prime coming to switch in 2020 <laughs> <laughs> nor am i having prime ribs <laughs> Um, and then I think you're going to see 3D World Deluxe get delayed out of the 35th anniversary party. Yeah. And it's going to come out in January of 2021. And they'll kind of do like they did with the year of Luigi, where they extended it like a yep. few months because delays happen. And I think that's a sign of how messed up Nintendo got from COVID-19 for 2020 scheduling. They kind of just sat there. They sat on Pikmin 3 for a little while. And said, well, if we have to delay things, you know, we can slot this in. And I would say I'm 99% confident that Pikmin 3 is being slotted in to replace the timing that 3D World Mm -hmm. would have had. It's a Wii U game replacing another Wii U game. And that's why I would definitely anticipate 3D Deluxe coming out early next year because the 3D collection is more pivotal to Nintendo this year if they do want to celebrate the 35th anniversary in a meaningful way. And you need those three games for as a holiday release because 3D Deluxe simply doesn't have the je ne sais quoi to move hardware that 3D Collection does. Yeah, I, I agree with you. 3D World Deluxe is is a next year game for sure. And um, the Pikmin October 30th release date is a little strange. You know, it's, it's, it's Halloween, right? I mean, 
you know what <laughs> what business do you have releasing a pikmin game around that time of the year doesn't doesn't feel right but i think yeah i mean i think nintendo had to call an audible on this one to get to get something but yeah i, I would agree with um 3d world being a 2021 early hopefully an early 2021 release and yeah i mean i think for me i mean i think you just i mean the only the only thing you can go on is is the last few months of of how things have played out for nintendo and if twitter drops is the major form of communication for Mm -hmm. 2020 then i think that's probably what we should expect going forward with with the first party announcements yeah and that's where like go back to the the original question of you said where do we what do we see from nintendo in like the next four weeks or so for like let's say the month of september i think we see the 3d world and the 3d collection get dated yep. i could see another partner showcase probably in the middle of the month around the tokyo game show maybe maybe it won't be a partner showcase maybe it'll, maybe it'll actually be a normal mini but i do think we'll have a direct of some form around tokyo game show that's nintendo tradition i don't really see them deviating too far from that because it's another chance to hopefully highlight some of the third-party games coming this holiday be it doom eternal or some new announcements for companies. And then, I mean, from that point forward, we still have to hear about the next Smash Brothers DLC character. We still have to hear about the Pokemon expansion pack part two that's supposed to be coming out this holiday. Nintendo still has a lot of stuff they have to communicate and it's really, it's impossible to guess how they're going to do that. Is it going to be Twitter drops? Is it going to be in direct minis? Is Nintendo just gonna have their own direct for themselves and talk about their own software or are they just gonna again they're just gonna go to twitter and drop a press release and say here's the pokemon expansion pack here's some of the content it's coming out this day in november enjoy smash brothers typically has a larger audience they usually make a bigger spectacle about smash brothers dlc fighters so but they could give sakurai his own presentation it doesn't have to necessarily be a part of a direct it can just be hey on you know in two weeks, Sakurai is going to talk to you about the next Smash Brothers character. And that's enough. That would get people excited. They've had Sakurai do the full breakdown of characters outside of a Direct. So they could still do the announcement outside of a Direct. But that's the uncertainty of Nintendo in 2020 is that there's really no safe bet to say they're going to do anything. It feels yeah. like they've washed their hands of 2020 and they're looking to 2021, which is actually was a topic by Bloomberg where Nintendo may have quit on 2020 and they're stockpiling games yeah. to launch the Switch Pro or the Switch revision of 2021 with. Yep, I mean, and- there's definitely method to the madness there, right? And obviously this year has been great for them with with sales of both hardware and software, obviously Animal Crossing and just breaking records left and right and Switch sales, hardware sales are going extremely well for them. So yeah, I mean, they can they can afford to take their foot off the gas and and kind of i don't want to say regroup because they're not they're not hurt they're not you know they're not down or anything but yeah i mean this is this is a good time for them while they're still making so much money to you know get 2021 in in the crosshairs and and really just make it their best year so yeah i think i think you know if you think about it in hindsight i mean maybe maybe that's the, that was the plan all along that we're going to get we're going to get a little bit you know to to keep the fans happy but yeah i mean the big stuff really starts next year it does seem that way like i would i saw that report read it i kind of sat there reflected on it say well let's think i mean really think it through breath of the wild 2 is going to be a 2021 release it's zelda's 35th anniversary in 2021 if yeah. you really have the availability and the option of launching a revision, be it, no matter no matter what it is, whether it's a slight uptick in power or if it's just a new shell with a slightly better screen, you need a strong launch game. Majora's Mask and Monster Hunter launched the new 3DS. Mm-hmm. Yep. What better than you had Link's Awakening help launch the Switch Lite? Yep. So if I have a Breath of the Wild 2 coming out sometime next year and I can launch new hardware with it, why wouldn't I do that? It's a smart move. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate to consumers 
today who have been invested since 2017 to come into the year of 2020. And you can say, yeah, COVID messed things up, and it did. But it feels still that Nintendo's output this year has been has been rough. We've we're potentially looking at a year that the only brand new releases are Animal Crossing, Clubhouse Games, and Paper Mario. That's terrifying to think Nintendo's as far as brand new releases, not counting ports, just brand new releases, may only total three or four games for the entire calendar year. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of baffling. It's it, also understandable due to the pandemic. Right. It makes you think about the Wii U days because, you know, that was kind of the output you were getting back then, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I mean, there's a lot that could be discussed about Nintendo's 2020 in terms of the marketing communication. How major were they actually impacted by COVID? Is it Nintendo just playing things conservatively and they know they have new hardware in 2021 where they sat there and said, we're doing great in 2020. We don't really need any big releases. If we can hold them, we will. And I mean, that's a topic in and of itself. Is that actually a good business practice? Yes, you're doing great right now, but are you potentially burning some of the goodwill you have cultivated over the last few years with you know, the community in favor of we're gonna launch a revision in the next calendar year and we want you to invest then instead of you investing now you could burn bridges. You might get people get fed up saying, yep. why am I going? Yeah, great. You had a great 2021. But I can look at the switch. You had a great 2017. You had a good 2018. Yeah. You had a solid 2019. You had an abysmal 2020. What are you going to like? You're going to have a fantastic 2021. And we're going to see a repeat of this. Depending when you launch brand new hardware. If you launch brand new hardware in early 2023, maybe you're going to launch strong again. But if this... You know, if the subsequent years are yeah. going to be just okay, you know, as a consumer, Nintendo can only do this to you so many times before you kind of just start to lose faith that they're ever going to change. Right. So, I do have uh, I do have one more question for you: Is the September investor meeting that was unscheduled? <laughs> do you think? anything interesting will come out of that or do you think it's kind of more um business board level type type discussions uh that's that's tough to say i mean they said they're not going to have any new announcements about any product or anything so anyone expecting nintendo to like imply that they're coming out with a revision next year or to date games or anything like that's not going to happen at this uh it could be about updates about how they still want to get into the movies they want to have the theme park yeah i could see them focusing on their ambitions to spread out to new media and that things are still on track despite covid at the worst case scenario i could see is that there maybe is some sort of management shakeup. Mm -hmm. maybe maybe the board and shareholders despite having huge profits yep. they're not satisfied with the way furukawa is handling communication Yep. And it's kind of like, hey, we're continuing to wait for you to tell us what's coming and you're not doing it. I don't think he's going to step down or that Nintendo board's necessarily going to like vote him out or anything. But I could see maybe something on a managerial level or maybe Miyamoto is finally going to announce his retirement. Mm. You know, I was thinking about that. I mean, it seems like he's uh, i mean he's obviously the the figurehead at nintendo and and you know he's an absolute icon and legend in at nintendo and in the industry but yeah maybe maybe it's time you know that that he announces that um at, at this it could could well be something along those lines we'll we'll yet have to see what how that plays out yeah it should for the general audience it's probably not going to be anything too impactful or really all that interesting well, for those invested in the industry and the business side of things, it probably could prove to be educational. We'll find out in the, you know a few weeks. So something that I know I'm going to keep an eye on, but I would say 90% of the people listening yep. probably not going to be anything that you have to be too concerned or invested in. And we did have a question on Streamlabs. We had a $5 donation from King DJD who asks, with the idea that Mario 3D World Deluxe is launching in 2021, do you think it will be promoted as part of the 35th anniversary? Also, 
when do you think we'll hear about any No More Heroes again? Love the podcast, guys. To answer your first question, yes, I still think Nintendo will promote it as part of the 35th anniversary, even if it is delayed into 2021. It's still going. It's still kind of a big release for the Switch. It's still Mario. Yep. And if they treat it similar to Pikmin 3 Deluxe by adding new content, it's going to be something that they want, you know, just be a moment of celebration for Mario. So when the 3D collection is announced in September, I do anticipate that 3D World Deluxe will be there alongside it. I don't see Nintendo really announcing these two projects as separate entities it'd be in their interest to do them together as for the second part when we will hear about any of the no more heroes games that's a great question because we know that no more heroes one has already been rated in south korea so that means that game could release really at any point in time no more heroes 3 we heard about a few weeks ago they didn't date it yet. We're running out of time for them really to date it. I mean, we still see his head covering the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> our thought process at the time of the indie world was that maybe it could be there. People said, well, that's not really an indie game. So then it was, well, there's a direct in the following week. Maybe it could be there. It once again was not at the partner showcase. At this point, I'm not anticipating No More Heroes 3 to even release in 2020. I think it's probably going to be an early 20, uh, 2021 release. No More Heroes 1 HD, maybe that makes a 2020 release, unless they do something like make it a pre-order bonus, which I really don't anticipate. But I think No More Heroes 1, we will hear about this year. Yeah. Maybe released before the holiday, but No More Heroes 3, the way Nintendo's handling the partner showcases, maybe if there's one in September, we, we see No More Heroes 3 again. But otherwise, really unsure when we could potentially hear of either of those games. Yeah, if I was to predict, I'd say No More Heroes 1 is sometime between now and the end of the year, and No More Heroes 3 is, is next year. Don't know when it's going to be next year, though. Could be It really really could be any time. I mean, we don't really know too much about that game and how far along it is in development. So, yeah, it could be, could be a year away, honestly. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Well, they did have on the eShop that it did have a TBA 2020 along with Bravely Default 2. My hunch is just that both of those games have been delayed till early 2021 at this point. Yeah. It's it's September. We haven't heard of them again. And as we brought up earlier, it's the marketing cycle. The longer you wait, yep. the more limited. And those are games you kind of want to have some decent marketing leading up to release. You can't just date them six weeks in advance and say, that game's going to launch and do well. No, you probably want it in a showcase of its own highlight the gameplay without his head blocking the whole screen move aside <laughs> suda let us see the game get as excited announce the release date then and then probably do another showcase our new trailer drops another round of media before it launches to generate a new wave of hype and then release it but it's 2020 nothing's really has made any sense this year so we'll find out when the time comes and that will conclude today's episode of Nate the Hate. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let us know your thoughts on the topic in the comment section below. We kind of covered a lot in this episode. I'd like to thank MVG again for joining me. Thanks for having me on, Nate. And uh, yeah, thanks uh, to the listeners for uh, sticking with us. And uh, there'll be more interesting chats coming. Yes, there's a lot coming up in the very near future that we will be able to discuss and that includes Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. So we have a lot to talk about in the coming weeks. And as MVG said, I'd like to thank the audience for listening and all of the support you guys show us. It means the world to both of us. So thank you. And we do apologize again for getting anyone's hopes up for the most recent Direct. We will do better with the way we communicate any information that we have in the future. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate.